today on Brilliance Business TV, we have the wonderful Indiana Greg. Indy has built a successful career as both a performer and a creative tech visionary. She currently serves as the CEO and founder of We Do, a mobile web-based social bank and communication dropping payments application that helps people virtually sell their goods and services in real time. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pula. We have a wonderful guest today, Indiana Gregg, making waves all across the globe with her incredible company, We Do. So a really interesting conversation to follow. I just want to make an official shout out to our show sponsors, Dreamweaver Artist Ranch. We are streaming live on mspnewsglobal.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and we're also streaming through the E360 TV network under Fresh Takes, going out to Apple TV, Fire TV, Android TV, Roku, and many, many more. And we're also on Business Innovators radio network let's bring in our incredible guest indiana greg indy welcome to brilliance business tv pleasure to be here mark thank you i'm really looking forward to a conversation with you today and i really want to go deep into we do because i know the success you are having with your business and how it's serving all the people that you are being of service to indeed. I want to go backwards a little bit into your past, your background as a performer and all your background that has led you into the work you're doing today. Sure. Where do I start? Um, at the I, beginning. <laughs> let's start at the very beginning. Yes. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was born and raised in the Midwest. I, um, I uh, did my degree at Indiana State University. I was born in Terre Haute, Indiana, hence my name, Indiana Gregg. Um, and I moved to Europe about almost 30 years ago um, and started in the tech industry um, doing stuff for Sony Digital, um, digital artwork and some building websites and um, moved into freelancing. And I was in the south of France and I started a band and I uh, eventually got a record deal. Um, and, you know, sang and toured as a singer songwriter. Um, I had three children and uh, my husband left me. So um, that turned into like a real career. I decided to become a rock star and got a label deal and uh, moved to the UK and started touring there. And um, we had some deals in Sweden. And um, in the interim, uh, there was this big problem with piracy. So um, I decided to build a platform. I was in tech. Um, and uh, so my husband and I built a platform called Kerchoons, uh, which was an early bird in the music industry that provided uh, artists with royal royalties for their streams and downloads and flew all over the world talking to labor, la labels and, um, you know, the big majors and a lot of major independents, um, you know, trying to bring people on board because piracy was an issue and there wasn't an alternative at the time. Um, Spotify hadn't launched, iTunes hadn't launched, and the music industry hadn't really accepted um, the fact that their model was drowning and dying. Um, and, uh, 
you know, everybody else gets it together, gets their act together, and they kind of watch what the, in, you know, the music industry does, like the porn industry had it together, the, you know, the, the movie industry later got it together, but the music industry was uh, in dire straits. And so we had a platform and built it up to about 14 and a half million users. And, um, you know, it was great days. Um, after that, I started a, a beauty company called Groove Nail Care, and we distributed all over the world, um, primarily in Europe and Canada. Um, and uh, that was about as boring as watching paint dry. I really wanted to get, literally, <laughs> nail polish. Um, but uh, I wanted to get back into tech, so I uh, started to become a consultant, and uh, I, I still had my agency, Digital Unicorns, at, and at the time, and had been uh, decided to become, you know, freelance consultant and do a lot of work and get my hands dirty again. Um, while that company took off and other people were were managing it mainly, um, and I realized that there's a big problem um, in freelancing with platforms that are taking really too much of a chunk of the wages that freelancers earn, and it's not good for the economy. It's not good for other businesses who hire them, and the landscape it just wasn't fair. Um, so I started fiddling around, um, started working on building some prototypes and some models. And one morning I woke up and was like, oh, if you have, you know, if you want to beat the banks, you've got to be the bank. And this was a, um, a little line that my dad used to say to me when I asked him for allowance money. And I was like, right, right, we'll be a bank. That'll solve all the problems because then we won't have to charge people up front. We can create a communications tool that allows people to uh, stream live on video and audio and drop in and and hold seminars and all sorts of things without forcing them to pay. And they can take payments and sell goods and services. And you know, we'll just we'll, we'll earn money for the platform through the banking tools and the invoicing tools. And you know, um, it became kind of a monster that I wanted to tackle. So uh, I built a prototype and I showed it to a guy called David Jakes, who's the founding CFO of PayPal, and he was the former treasurer of Silicon Valley Bank. And he said, yeah, I'm in. So at that point, it was like, okay, everyone else I asked came in. And, um, you know, I'm 50 years old, so I have a pretty deep uh, Rolodex of people I know who I think are brilliant. And uh, the few that I asked to get started with were available and wanted to, wanted to get involved in this. Um, and understood that this is a mission to help more people help more people and to really help to um, make a level playing field, but also help um, a lot of people who have suffered through the recession and through COVID uh, to get, you know, back up on a ladder. Um, jobs are scarce. There's an, uh, a lot of automation. Uh, jobs are being replaced. It's, yes. it's difficult out there. So, <clears throat> you know, that's the that's basically my story. It's a great background story, <coughs> excuse me. And when you mentioned about what you did for performers and in the performance industry, what really stood out to me, Indy, you kind of did it before all of these big platforms like Spotify, which is huge now. And like you mentioned, you did it much before them. So that just goes to show what a great mind you are, because now these platforms are doing so, so well for performers, aren't they? Well, not so well for performers, more well for the recording industry and um yes. <laughs> and the platforms themselves. Yes. Unfortunately, um, you know, that's the model that the music industry went forward with. Um, and I still believe in the end of the power of the individual. I still believe that there's a power of entrepreneurship and that should be throughout the creative industries as well as the fintech industries and all across the board for coaches and freelancers. Um, you know, they're, half the world's workforce uh, by 2027, more than half, 52%. Um, will be part of that freelance and, and, and gig economy. And we have to do something about that. We can't have this huge disparity in society where there's such a huge gap between the haves and have nots and there's not really a middle class or, you know, it's it's eroding society. It's creating division. It's causing, um, you know, a lot of hysteria and it has to change. And I feel as though, you know, when you see a problem, you and, you know, if, if you don't provide a solution or create a solution or facilitate a solution, then then shame on you, you know. So in my mind, um, technology can help. 
And there'll need to be a lot more we do's out there that are helping um, to solve these problems in the world. But we're out there to get our piece of that $4 trillion market, you know, um, and we're, we're on our way to get there. So. And I would like to ask you, actually, Indy, do you do any kind of performing now or is it just in the shower or at home <laughs> in private or do you still do any performing? Well, I'm I'm a songwriter. I like to write. Um, I'm, I'm creative that way. I like to write books. I like to write articles. I like to write, you know, and, and that's something I do to relax and to kind of um divulge my thoughts and find out what's going on in my subconscious and, and really check in with how I'm feeling. So it's a form of art and meditation more for me. Um, and I don't feel like putting something out unless I have something real to say. So at the moment, I'm completely invested in, in, and we do, um, in spending all my time, you know, living and breathing, um, the, the momentum of, of this great, you know, group of people who are working with us and, um, you know, the, the, the motivation is really to improve, you know, leave the world a better place. So I don't really perform at the moment. I mean, I do sometimes go down and sing a few songs and play guitar, at, you know, at a local pub and hang out with people or do jam se sessions and things like that. Um, but it's not um, it's not part of my life like it was before. And um, I'm just not as motivated by that um anymore it was a short stint in my life you know a couple of years um where i was really a kind of a desperate woman with three young children um and needed an income and that was the most accessible route for me at that moment um but my real talents are in innovation um you know building things coding things designing things and deploying things you know, i'm an executioner so you know that's where my passion lies and, uh, we all change, all indeed. <laughs> we, all, we all evolve, we all change. I'm very different to what I was doing just even a few years ago. And that's the great thing of life that we can change and evolve as well. My next question, and it's a personal one I'm interested in, actually. You mentioned how you managed to get millions of subscribers globally and I know you're doing the same with we do you've built this global platform on such a big global scale I have a vision I visualize and my business at the moment is very one-on-one -on -one working with my clients and I'm very aware that I want to go more one-to-many with some kind of digital product or even some kind of physical product I haven't got that far in my visualization to know what that is but I'm definitely thinking some kind of visual um, sorry, some kind of digital product. Hmm. So my question is, what tips do you have for building such a global platform where you get such high amount of subscribers? What do you feel is what you how you got su su such success to get so many people on board i i know with my visualization the product and service when the time is right i'll know what that is but then taking it out on such a one-to-many scale to get millions of subscribers how did you make that happen well um at the beginning uh what kind of created the the roller, the, you know, the, the, the ball, you know, the snowball um, was really uh, people were motivated by emotion and there was a problem that needed to be solved. And there were many people who wanted to see a solution to that problem. So um, I would say don't be afraid to put yourself out there emotionally and also put yourself out, out there perhaps creating controversy because, you know, that was a big battle for me at the time. I was fighting pirates and I was the bitch of the Internet and it wasn't easy. But I didn't care because I knew there needed to be a solution and that you had to take those steps to get there. And I think when people see that you're authentically um, working towards helping 
people, helping society, helping a niche or a sector of society, um, that you you know you put yourself out there and you put yourself across, and there's ups and downs. And uh, but primarily from that end, um, then we created you know a lot of PR. We we got the word out. We were you know we were very very visually present at the time on television and in the radio and. Um, you know, there wasn't as much data analytics back in the day. So, um, you're, you know, you, we had like the long tail of advertising. YouTube was barely in its infancy. Um, my spy space had just barely gotten started. And I think Facebook was just starting up at the time. Um, social media was different. Now you have a lot more um, accessibility, a lot more leverage that you can use across yes. you know, multiple networks. And um, I think just, you know, encourage your super fans, the people who are really going to cheerlead this. You know, a lot of them are still with me today that worked with me, you know, during that period with cartoons and women at work. And, um, you know, they're still out there cheerleading and they're, they're hyper evangelist. And this time around, I brought them on the onto the team to be part of you know of we do and you know gave them some equity in the company and got them you know to be superheroes and the more superheroes you have the more the word gets out we're um we're we're like monkeys we copy each other and a lot of people want to know what what you're doing so if you have something out there that you want to put across don't don't be afraid and don't be afraid to speak your piece and speak your mind and be yourself i like what you've just shared and it goes back to solving a problem. So what problem can you solve, which is really, really important. And knowing who you are serving as well, that's really, really important. And I must say what I like the most about what you said is the power of media and PR, which you know I'm very big on. And I know that you are still heavily involved in media coverage and PR as well, which I feel is really, really important as well. I've just manifested the most incredible thing indeed so for the last couple of years I was imagining uh, sorry visualizing myself on billboards in New York City <laughs> this week I have my very own huge billboard in Times Square and it's shown from 11am on the morning till 11pm at night. So I've got this huge PR campaign going on, but I manifested this because I've actually visualised it and now it's a reality. So I'm really, really excited about <laughs> that as well. That's amazing. Congratulations. I think, you know, that's really important. Your mind's very powerful. Um, visualizing is is extremely important. You know, I used to do that before I went on stage, um, how I would engage with the audience and, and go through the motions. And, you know, athlete, athletes do it. Um, entertainers do it. Business people do it. You visualize your day and your brain has this amazing capacity to listen to your thoughts. And I agree. so keeping track and check on your thoughts um, at all times and being vigilant about it really does work, you know, it's very just, powerful. It's just I even thank the universe because I visualized it for so long and then someone offered it to me and it was accessible to me. So I said yes straight away and it's like, Thank you, universe. I've been asking for this for like the last couple of years and now it's a reality. So I believe so much in the power of visualisation. So tell us a little bit about we do. Go into a little bit more detail, Indy. Yeah, well, we do as a platform that we are, we've rolled out on iOS and Android. Right now we're in an invitation-only scenario, but we're a combination of two things. Well, on the one side, we're a communication and organizational tool that allows you to organize your life, your business, your daytime, your, um, your, your scheduling, and um, also allows you to drop in uh, to conferences and, 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 and create them yourself. Um, on the other side of it, we're banking fintech. Um, we uh, help you deploy and automate your invoices. We issue you a debit card and an account. Uh, you can, sh you know, 
take money and, and, and pay in multiple currencies, including cryptocurrency. Um, and, uh, you know, we the next step is to establish a marketplace. Uh, I won't go into a lot of detail, but we've been planning it for about six months. Um, and basically, it's a tool end to end for you to serve your clients and customers and, and you know, use it use it to the power of what your creativity is. And for me, that's very important. The most important aspect is we're removing the barrier to entry for people because a lot of the tools out there are expensive. And if you don't have a lot of money to spend uh, when you're starting out, um, it's very difficult to choose. And it's very difficult to get something that is comprehensive enough to actually serve you as a business while you're getting started. So we only get paid when you get paid. We take 2.9% and 30 cents on payments. Uh, we make a little bit of money on the FX exchange and interchange. Um, and we make a little bit of money on the issuance of debit cards and various programs that you can choose um, depending on who you are and what tools um, you, know, you want to access or add on to. Uh, but out of the box, you can run your entire business with WeDo with no upfront charges. That's actually incredible. And as I'm discussing it more with you, I think at some point I should really get involved because mm -hmm. I use PayPal quite a lot for invoicing and things like that. And it can become very expensive. And I like the way that you've got everything all together, which is the next step I need to take within my business. What kind of clients do you serve, Indy? Well, right now, um, the most uh, expressive are the coaches, consultants, uh, PR people, media people, um, people who uh, serve other people. So teachers, tutors, um, musicians uh, who exchange uh, their services uh, with their clients and do one-to-ones or one-to-groups or even, you know, groups to many, um, you could hold seminars, uh, but it's primarily right now the freelancers, the coaches uh, who were, well, I guess who were targeting the most um, and, and their clients so that, you know, they can test flight it and we can get customer feedback and, and, you know, we're early days. So finding product market fit, uh, finding that sweet point where people say this product's absolutely irresistible. That's what we're after over the next, you know, six to nine months. So my next question, and this is another one that I want to know the answer to for myself, so I'm sure my viewers will be wanting to know the same. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm quite busy running my business, and then I love the sound of everything what you are offering. How easy is it to get involved and to bring it into your business because I'm so used to just sending out PayPal invoices or Stripe. Is it easy to transition? Is it an easy setup process? Absolutely. All you need to do is sign up. Um, we get you your, your debit card and your account, account set up. You set up a schedule a meeting. We send out a link to your client, bring them on take the payment, it automates the invoice, and you're done. Money's in your account. You can send that money anywhere you want or use it as your primary account. So I am very interested for myself, Indy, so we will need to have a conversation or I will have a conversation with one of your teams so that I'm more in the know of exactly what is involved and I would love to get involved in that. Indeed, we're coming to a commercial break, so please stay where you are. Thank you everyone for joining us for part one of Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. Today we are having a conversation with Indiana Greg, founder and CEO of We Do. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, Cyberchuck 2.0 here. I'm so excited to be able to share my vision of Dreamweaver's Artist Ranch. They say you can't choose your family. Not only am I saying you can choose your family, you get to thrive with your family here at Dreamweaver's Artist Ranch. It's a place for like-minded individuals to come together to share experiences and gain experiences, not only through workshops, 
through performances and through exhibits. This is a place where you can disconnect from the outside world and reconnect into a community of people that there is no judgment. There's only support. And this place is an amazing place to grow and to tap into your highest potential and to be able to show off all your talents. This is a place you can come and network and really thrive. I'm so excited for Dreamweavers Artist Ranch. This is a place where dreams actually come true. I love you all so very much. I'll talk to you all later. Peace. Welcome back to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. Today, we're in conversation with the incredible Indiana Greg. Indy, welcome back. Hi, hi, Mark. Good to be back. Yes, I'm really enjoying our conversation, Indy. So I know we touched on it a little bit before the commercial break, what would you say some of the struggles your clients come to you before they get involved? And then how does we do make life easier for them? Yeah, there's a number of them. Um, a lot of freelancers and startups have a lot of trouble and don't have the, the money to hire, say, a CFO or even a bookkeeper or an accountant. And so automating their invoicing and um, managing their payments is pretty important to them. Um, the second one is, um, you know, a lot of the platforms out there today take 20 percent, you know, all the way up to 30, sometimes 50 percent uh, on what freelancers earn. Um, I'm talking about the major sites out there. Um, they're the, you know, the. Uh, people per hours and the fivers and the upworks and the Udemy's and, and this isn't sustainable for the future. It's not good for the economy. Um, of course, we know SMEs are primarily who, who are, you know, hiring freelancers and now major corporations as well. Um, yes. go and, and, and hire freelancers. And if, uh, someone's a middleman taking 20% plus charging those freelancers a SAS and holding their money, for sometimes seven to 10 days before it gets deposited into their account, that causes friction. And it's not sustainable with the, the uh, J curve of, you know, how many millions of people are going to be moving into this direction over the next few years and already have. Um, freelancing, you know, is a $2 trillion business in the US alone, in the United States. And it's a $4 trillion market worldwide globally right now. Um, and it's projected to grow. And we know that. And so the future of work is changing. Um, the way people work, the way people communicate is changing. Um, there are more distributed and remote teams. Uh, office space is getting smaller and smaller for even big corporations who realize that they can get away with um, allowing people to work from home and, and create productivity um, and, and allow people to have more flexibility for their lives. You know, you spend such a big part of your life in work. And so you may as well, you know, spend it the way you'd like to spend it and how you'd like to spend it and, and where you'd like to spend your time. And so that's the beauty of technology and the future for for where we're heading, I think, with, with society. Um, and I think it's better for everyone. What would you say makes we do so unique? Um, well, there's a lot of things that make we do unique. I think, first of all, the team and the people. Um, we have an outstanding set of creatives, an outstanding set of technologists and, you know, ex extraordinarily wonderful uh, corporate governance uh, with WeDo. The tool itself, what makes it unique is it really removes a lot of the barriers. Um, there are some underlying technology that's proprietary that um, I won't necessarily talk about, but um, that's coming that we've been developing over time. Uh, but what makes it unique is really the mission of removing barriers for people, um, removing, you know, allowing people to really thrive without creating obstacles for them, financial obstacles primarily, ease of use, and also um, the ability to really run your life and run your entrepreneurship and, and take that risk uh, without too many um, risks to take you know, create your side hustle, create your business with no barriers. Um, you know, if your talent, knowledge, skills, product um, that you're developing, uh, you know, 
takes a big portion of your time to to get right, um, we is a great place to be testing that. I love it. And you shared a beautiful success story on my radio show. So I would like you to share that here of a really great success story, what we do has done for one of your clients. Who um, I don't remember which success story, but we've had a few. Um, one of them was um, a particular individual who I'd known for quite some time um, who found um, themselves in a pretty awful position um, and was living in their car. And, uh, you know, but the thing about we do is if you have a mobile phone and that's generally the one light that people keep on, um, you can use it and transact and um, and then, you know, create your own success um, if you have talent, knowledge and skills. So this particular um, person is a musician and was able to teach um, some voice les lessons uh, on the application and uh, earn and take a payment. Um, and so that's, uh, that's something. And, and actually be able to, you know, buy food for the day and a place to stay. And um, we're hoping to see more and more of that for people. I just love how you're serving every level of business from really successful businesses to people that are just starting out which is really really incredible indiana now i would like to share with everyone that if what indiana has shared today really resonates with you and you can see the value of what we do can do for your business go and sign up get we do today at get we do dot today that's get we do dot today get we do dot today who would you like to sign up today who are you really calling out to Indy? you know smes who hire freelance or consultants anyone who wants to learn uh anyone who wants to teach anyone who's a coach or a consultant or a freelancer or if you have a product or a service um, you know, it's no risk. Sign up, um, reserve your username at least, because you know what happens. You've you spent probably years on the internet with the same internet handle. You don't want to lose that. So, you know, go sign up, download the app on uh, iOS or Android, uh, reserve your username, and um, we'll be letting more of the public in um, in a couple months. Uh, we're we're slowly letting people in on the wait list, and uh, there's about. 5,000, I think, on the wait list just now. So um, it'll be, it'll, it'll move quickly. Um, so make sure you get your username reserved, especially if you're a celebrity or somebody who, you know, your username is really valuable, go reserve that immediately um, so that, you know, you have it because it's first come first serve and you don't want people to impersonate you. Um, so yeah. <sighs> exciting times i'm really looking forward to seeing how we do really takes over the world indy is there anything we did not cover indy that you would like to share you know i don't think so just uh the one thing i'd like to say to anybody who uh has a dream and and wants to you know work hard and commit to that dream is to to go for it and uh, hopefully we do can be a part of your journey just go for it. Indy, thank you so much for coming on to the Brilliance Business TV show. Thank you for having me, Mark. It's Appreciate been my it. pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for watching Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. Today, we've been in conversation with the incredible Indiana Gregg, CEO and founder of We Do. Until next time, bye for now.